It is right around 6.30 in the morning here on our Catalina day. And um, I am just getting ready to go grab some coffee over at Cove because I was up until way too late last night and I'm exhausted. So I'm gonna grab a coffee before I have breakfast. Looks like my favorite coffee uh, barista is still there. But today we are at Catalina. We're still sailing in. It's nice and breezy outside and it's beautiful out here. So I can't wait to take you along with us. I trust you. <laughs> Surprise you. Mm -hmm. I always love surprises. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. It's Baymax. I've never had Baymax. Thank you. I have been dreaming of this coffee since we got off the last ship because I cannot make it at home. I don't like coffee, but I like this coffee. This is the Coconut Caramel Latte, and they make it here at the Disney Cruise Line, and it's at Cove and at French Quarter Lounge here on the Wonder. And it is so good. It's a little coffee at first, but afterwards, perfect. It's so good. The view, the coffee as we're sailing in right before breakfast. It's a great way to start the day. And it has Baymax. So it looks like the same station repeated a couple of times. Ooh, sticky rice kanji. Salt stick spinach, tofu, got the classic Mickey waffles, pastries. What's down here? Ooh, bagel with egg and spinach. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, good morning. Is there an omelet station somewhere? Perfect, thank you. Here we have more pastries. Ooh, breakfast potatoes, those are my favorite. And I think I might have found the omelette station. Perfect. They will give you a table number. Okay. And then they'll bring the omelette to the table. Just okay. let them know which direction it will be sitting. Perfect. So they come straight to you. Thank you. Perfect. Good morning. Today I've decided to go with a full English breakfast with a side of a Mickey waffle with strawberry whipped cream uh, and a couple of pieces of smoked salmon and a cup of Joffrey coffee. So I've got scrambled egg fried egg because I can find it for later, baked beans, uh, potatoes, hash browns for my friend Chrissy, and bacon. That's for me. I've got an omelet coming and then I got some fruit. Uh, pineapple and honeydew, and some roasted potatoes, and the coffee you saw earlier. I also got an omelet. They have made to order omelets here, and you just go up, write down what you want, or they write down what you want, and bring it out to you. It takes a little bit, but I think it's worth it. The way disembarkation works here at Catalina is, at least today on our cruise, we went up to the Buena Vista Theater on level five, on level five, deck five, and got a sticker. And then they're all leading us to go to our tender boat. And whichever one they're going to, that's where we're following. You need to have ID for anybody 18 and over, and your key to the world, every person, including babies, key to the world card. So yes, make sure everybody has their own key to the world card so they keep track of who's coming on and off the ship. Ooh, don't fall down the stairs. And ID if you're 18 and up. Thank you. So it looks like 
there are four tenders here at Catalina. There's two alongside the ship, and then there are two that are just waiting for to come on in and bring people along. So just outside there, you can see the other two tenders that are going to pull alongside as soon as we're all here. With that, we are all to Catalina. Thank you so much. <laughs> we just uh, got off the Wonder, took a couple pictures over in Avalon, and now we are headed to go get mom some coffee because I've had coffee. She has not yet. So we asked some of the locals, hey, where's the best spot for coffee? And they said the brew house. So that's where we're off to now. Um, we're gonna go get her some coffee and then we're gonna meet up for our excursion at 9.45. So we got a half an hour for coffee. But I think we're good. Yeah. I'm excited. So we got a play park here, little, looks like Knabe Park, Knabe. I apologize for my horrendous pronunciation, but look, there's a play park with a slide and a little pirate ship. A little beach volleyball area. And there were a set of swings further back. Here on Catalina, you're going to see a whole lot of golf carts. You'll see a few gas, a few uh, gas vehicles, but there's a lot of golf carts because you don't. It's a small island. You don't need a ton of space you can if you live in the downtown area you can pretty much walk everywhere so I'm heading off to go meet my mom at her coffee shop that we found and we're gonna pick up there we have found the Catalina Island brew house this is the place that was recommended so we're gonna go here for coffee They won the 2019 Favorite Brewery and the 17th Annual Microbrew Festival. That's super cool. Got beers, wines, and a broad variety of coffee. And to top it all off, this place is family owned, locally owned, family owned. Always like to support local businesses when we go travel anywhere. We booked our tour through the Catalina Conservancy directly. Now I can provide a little more information probably down below in the doobly-doo or the, the comments um, or links, just so that if you want to book directly through the Conservancy, rather going through, than through the cruise line, it makes life really easy. So Avalon is the only city you're going to find on all eight of the Southern California Channel Island. Crash the gate. It's a nice little walk up here for you the chance. All these plants have been labeled so you can learn about them. And we get about halfway up here, you'll be in the California Channel Island native plant area. All these plants on the left hand side are found in one or more of the eight California Channel Islands, like the Kettle Island Ironwood tree, that tall tree that's right next to us there. That's only found on this island, nowhere else in the world. So all of 
those road uh, things over there, yeah. those are all fire breaks. I'm hoping we find some a little bit closer, but I never know. They do roam freely out here. Tanside or Coreopsis giganteum. This is found out on the California Channel Islands, a couple of places on the mainland, but not very many. But they weigh about uh, anywhere from 15 to 1,800 pounds. And they can run over 35 miles an hour. Right. Yeah. And from a standing position, they tell me that they can jump over a six-foot fence. That island off to your right hand side, that is a big island in California. Right now we are up at the Catalina Airport, which is only for private planes right now. But apparently United started here. It's amazing up here. It's so pretty. Uh, I will, I'm gonna let you guys pick for me because you guys know right, what the good ones are. Give me team peanut butter, we'll rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors, too. There you go. Peanut butter. Peanut butter? Wait, well, no, wait. Long 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 long. Long. <laughs> As part of the private Wrigley property, so they still own uh, control of the ranch out here. If anything happens to it, they want to give it up, they can't sell it. They have to turn it over to Conservancy. That's called Shark Harbor right down here below us. And the name is actually from, you see of the reef out there where the white water is? The big rock with the white tip? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you squint really hard and drink about six beers. It's just like a shark fin. Back down in the cottonwood, up this hill, back down, and we're gonna be on a route basically the rest of the way back. See what, what you're gonna miss. That's an insane amount of elevation gain and loss. Yeah. So this is one of the last remaining Banning stagecoach stops in Southern California. There's, I think there's one or two more, but they've all been modified into little gift shops and biker bars. This is still pretty much original. <laughs> Done by what we call the acorn woodpecker. And they are, what they do is they prepare these trees, put all these holes in the buildings and the trees, and then every year when the acorns ripen up, usually September, October, they'll collect them and stash them in there. So, okay, I look good for pictures now. <laughs> This is north, started here at Avalon, right. and then we came up through the gardens, and I think, normally they take a different road, but we took a, diff we took a, there was a, a road closure because of a truck, so I think normally the road goes up this way, but we went this way. And we came this way into, we came by the reservoir. We came over, we came over by Blackjack Mountain, drove over to the airport. And I think this is where we saw the bison. Yes, yeah, we saw the bison over at Blackjack Mountain. Because there was up here, they were like up here. Yes, this way. Right. Over to the airport in the sky, drove up to there. And then we came down by El Rancho Escondido Road. 
Right. And then we drove Probably. along that path over to where we could overlook. Oh, hold on. Where we could overlook. Overlooking Shark Harbor. Shark Harbor. And Little Harbor. Little Harbor. And then we continued the path around. <laughs> then we came back around along Ben Weston Trail. So we passed here. We came along here through. Oh no, uh, we must have taken. I don't know if that's a road. This might be the road. Came along Middle Ranch and the Eagle Sanctuary. Eagle Sanctuary there. And then I believe we followed this path here, which apparently is also the marathon route. And I think he said there was, was it 10,000 or 1,000? I think he said it was 10,000 feet of elevation across the entire marathon. Yeah. Which is effectively a trail marathon. But we came back up this way, I believe. Up along here. And then we came back up here. And then we drove back along this route. And then we took this road down. Back into Avalon itself. So we came to a place called NDMK here in Catalina today. And for lunch, I got the two pieces of yellowtail nigiri because this was caught today and filleted this morning. I also got the poke bowl, which has a half rice, half lettuce base, and I got it split with the uh, salmon and tuna. And mom got the the swordfish. Harpoon sword. Harpooned swordfish, which I also super fresh, caught this morning. I think they said caught this morning. Maybe filleted this morning, whatever it was. Super fresh. So this is our lunch for today. Woohoo! In Catalina. In Catalina. At at a little place called ND, NDMK, Endemic Fish House. Locally owned and operated by local kids who know the fishermen and they are the ones who make it first dibs. So definitely come and check this place out. So we were doing our tour with the Catalina Conservancy, which was, I thought it was fantastic. It yeah. was a little bit more, I think, than the Disney, uh, about an hour or more. Well, it cost a little more, too. Yes. So it was more expensive than the Disney Cruise Line tour. But you also got, like, an hour more time, which I think was super, super worth it. Um, so I think we went out further on the island. We went to parts that they didn't go, we believe. And one other really cool thing about... Our tour going through the Conservancy is, let's say there's a tractor trailer that's blocking the road. We can take a back road, which is exactly what we did. We got to drive through the botanical gardens and take some really bumpy back roads, of which I thought were hilarious and kind of fun. They were also kind of like jarring. Like you, I had the wind knocked out of me at one point because I came down so hard on the chair. Um, and I chose wisely. Yeah, I was in the very, very back. Mom was sitting shotgun. Um, each Jeep holds eight people. There are three in the back, then two rows of two, and then one person sitting shotgun. So um, the sides are open, top is covered. They have room for a car seat. There's room for a car seat. Uh, our driver was Ron, and he had so much knowledge, so much information. I think he said he'd been out here since, what, the 60s? Since, like, late 60s. Since, like, the late 60s, which is... A long time. That's a long time. So that was really cool to get to have a that local. much history of knowledge and, yeah, effectively a local, like, being our tour guide. And you could tell there he had so much information about the island. <laughs> about the island, about the different creatures, and about the, con the conservation efforts that are being done. Um, down to why are there... <laughs> Why are there grates and gates and, and cages around all of the trees? <laughs> because there is an invasive species, the deer here, and the deer here will eat all of them. <laughs> and it's mule deer. And it's mule deer. And the mule deer are not from the island. But going through the conservancy made sure that the majority of the cost went back into the island and keeping the island preserved and natural and all of that kind of thing, which for us is worth it to us. Right. And we like to support local and we like to support local environments. So that was a priority for us.
we booked ahead of time online. And if you go through the Conservancy, they have a shop downtown and you can get 10% off of your purchases there as well. So get some cool Catalina stuff, get back to the island, and we'll send a, we'll put a link on somewhere of how to sign up and go direct through the Conservancy for a three-hour tour rather than a two-hour tour through your cruise line. <laughs> but that was our that was our short version, our short wrap-up on our thoughts, the Catalina Conservancy eco-tour through their Jeep, 